Well, hey, y'all. Welcome to When We Walk podcast, where we talk about the things that we talk about when we walk. I'm Shireen. I'm Micah. So, we've been taking walks in the fall. Yep. And it's Halloween. Coming up. And a lot of people like to decorate for Halloween. Yep. We have some passionate Halloweeners. Very much. In our neighborhood, yes. Like, to the point where there is haunted houses in their front yard. Yes, and graves. All kinds of Grave sites, yep. Mm -hmm. Very scary things. It is. To the point where I remember early on when we moved in our neighborhood, we would have to drive, like, either take different routes because our kids did not want to see the things Mm -hmm. and I did not want to see the things or let them see them but people love to I know it's kind of a new like and maybe this has always been a thing and we're just real picking up on it later Um, but since I would say in the last like 10 years the number of people I've heard say their favorite holiday is Halloween I've heard this has been It feels like it's on the rise, but maybe I'm just meeting more of those people. No, I think it's on the rise. Like more inflatables in like Mm -hmm. the dragons. I even was, okay, so I took a walk by myself not long ago and I had to take our dog. Sad. And he wanted to pounce this dragon (laughs) that that would like inflate and his like fire would come out of his mouth. Interesting. And then it would retract and his wings would go out. And our dog wanted to like, jump this dragon it was very funny yeah, i let him kind of strange like, to me because he's usually so timid i know no but he he's was a dragon ready. slayer he was ready to fight the dragon, dragon slayer kirby That's there we good. go yeah so i don't know how i feel about it yeah i mean we are not against halloween no Mm-mm. we love halloween actually yeah. i actually yeah, like fan. dressing up with my kids i always have i'm always willing you're willing yes you don't enjoy it it's not, i'm not as passionate about mm-hmm. it but Laylee has over the years, yes, our creative genius always uh-huh. has a great idea for Halloween. She does. She starts planning it usually like in the summer. Usually. She used to draw pictures. Do you remember yes. that? Where she would draw yes. a picture of each person and what their costume would look like. Yep. And then we would have to make it come to reality. It was mm-hmm. never never quite to her standard, but yeah. we tried. You can, there's only so much you can do at the Goodwill. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we do like how we are we not decorators of our homes. We're not for decorators of the home. We're not um, into the bloody. No, I did have a have. Ma- when I was in third grade. I remember my mom finally sprung to get me like a good mask, like oh, a really good get? mask. I got um, it was an old man with his face ripped in half. Oh. I can't believe that she. And, <laughs> I can't believe and she so let you what get What would that. happen is, is like totally my mom is instead of every year after that through the rest of elementary instead of me getting a new costume I would wear a new outfit with the same <laughs> with mask. The mask. <laughs> yeah, so like one year it was like an army outfit, one year it was like flannel shirt, one year it was something else. But same, but scary always face. the same mask. Yeah. <laughs> It's probably stuffed in a closet somewhere in our house. Oh, my. We're going to have to find that next mm-hmm. time we're there. Yeah. Yeah, but we don't do the gory thing. No, we are we not. Yeah. No, we're usually like some Disney family or some, I don't know, movie, whatever. But we're not against Halloween. No. Mm-mm. Just not the scary parts of Halloween. Right. right. But there is, I mean, I did not grow up in the church, but there is like still a stigma to some Christians, I guess, that is like, they really no, struggle. don't do yep. Halloween. Yep. It is an evil day. It is the devil's day. Demons, all the things, right? Mm-hmm. Why do you, I, I don't, I didn't grow up with that. What is, what, yeah. m, what is it? I grew up in the church, but not in a church that was anti-Halloween. Okay. And so um, I'm not quite as familiar with it, but I, I, I do think just talking to people, it, it, it's everything you just said. It's the roots of this day it's what it um what people do that night yeah and just um i think generally a sense that is bigger than halloween but it is um, how many christians perceive spiritual warfare and the way the enemy works in our lives and so there's i think for a lot of people have this thinking of like if i associate myself with anything that the enemy is associated with then i am making myself vulnerable 
to his influence, to right. like getting slimed, getting, <laughs> you know, a demon on me. And so the safest thing for me to do on Halloween night is I think the way they think oftentimes is to, you know, just stay inside, shut the lights off, um, you know, and just not participate at all. Yeah. And I, I think that's just kind of over the years what's what's been passed down. A lot of people, and I, I think that's a sincere belief. I, right, right. Uh, I'm not like going to criticize it, but I do think there is, um, there is a different way to view spiritual warfare right. in the spiritual realm that could then maybe influence the way people feel about Halloween. Because right. the spiritual realm is real. It's real. I mean, yeah. we know this, but also, so I think just separating it from just the literal scary things we think of in from Halloween to yep. what does it actually look like more maybe more in our it actually probably plays out more in our everyday life than we even yeah. acknowledge yeah and one day of the year is not going to be the potential make or break of our spiritual walk with right. Jesus right and I think too um, not only is it you know I do think it's wise to be aware of what goes on on Halloween night, but right. I think it's also important to understand what Jesus came to do, that he, um, you know, he actually entered into a world where people genuinely thought that way about everything. Oh, yeah. And so kind of the Jewish believers um, were very careful about, you know, the meat that they ate and the places that they went and the people they associated with because they didn't want to get defiled. And mm -hmm. Jesus flipped that whole thing, mm -hmm. and he actually, he, you know, he touched lepers and prayed mm -hmm. for them. He went to places that good, righteous men did not go. He, he participated in gatherings that were defiling, at least by how, according Worldly to some standards, people's standards. Yeah. yeah, and so he he flipped the script to really show, actually, as um, a. An, an ambassador of light, mm -hmm. we can go into dark places and make them light yeah, and, uh, and bring that brightness and bring that light. And so I think that for you and I influences how we think about Halloween. Right. Um, that yes, we know there's activity happening in mm -hmm. the spiritual realm, mm -hmm. but we know that he who is in us is greater than he who yeah. is in the world. Yeah. And that, um, with the right heart and with wisdom, we can engage this night of the week where just practically speaking, neighbors are. Yeah. You get to interact out. with your neighbors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's one of the best nights. I mean, you, you're opening your door to all your neighbors, sharing mm -hmm. things with them. It is kind of weird to think about though. Yeah. You're just giving candy away to people you don't know. Yeah. That's a little weird, it but is. it is fun to interact yeah. with your neighbors. Everyone's out and about and, I think it's an important time to do that. So I guess it, yeah, it depends on how you, how you view some of that. But I think m what's more important is understanding that we do live in a spiritual yep. realm. Mm -hmm. And there's probably more activity on the everyday level Absolutely. of what, of the way the enemy wants to kind of take us out. Mm -hmm. You know, he's, what does scripture say? That he's prowl prowling around like yes. a roaring lion, mm -hmm. which means he's out and about <laughs> trying to... Yeah take us out on the, more on the daily than we yeah. even probably are aware. Yeah. And I think especially more so in the West, right? Mm -hmm. Especially more so here because yeah. you and I have been to other countries and they are a lot of other cultures are a lot more spiritually aware. Oh, absolutely. India, Africa, both places mm -hmm. that we've been, I mean, extremely spiritually aware. Yep. Sensitive. Of, of, of different spirits, mm -hmm. good, bad, whatever they call them. Um, and you become more aware of it there. You're 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 inundated with it at a different level. And here, it just feels a lot more. I mean, it's just under the surface. Yeah. And I think that's even to me, that's even scarier. Yeah. Yeah. To be honest. Yeah, I think so. I think the enemy is actually like a really good missionary. If you think <laughs> about this, well, <laughs> because like, to say it. well, because like, um, you know in missions like part of the whole thing is contextualization like how do you yeah how do you oh, take yeah. your truth and present it to a different culture mm -hmm. and the enemy i think knows how to contextualize and so in environments that are very open to mm -hmm. um to felt and experienced spiritual experiences the enemy's like i'll play that game yeah if that's what y'all so are it's up. a witch doctor yep. or yes. it's a hindu temple right. or yep, yep yep it's what they know Right. There. Yeah. And, and then I think in more like post-enlightenment, rationalized type cultures, like 
America or the mm-hmm. West, um, it's it it is more subtle because we're less open to kind of these experienced spiritual encounters, and it's and so um, we're more prone to giving ourselves to media yeah. and to um, I guess to avenues through which the enemy can move just as strongly, but he's just more covert. In just a way, in over the here. culture, yeah. just different. Yeah, the way cultural... that he counterfeits here is different than how he counterfeits in India. That's a good maybe. way to say it. Yeah. Oh, huh, that's interesting. I didn't think of it like that. Of him being a missionary, that's very strange. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's not presenting <laughs> truth. <laughs> no, he's, he's presenting not. a counterfeit. Yeah. He's pre- okay. pre- presenting lies, but he is he is at work. Yeah. He has a purpose. He yeah. has a plan. He has a goal. I mean, a lot of the things that a a Christian missionary would have yeah. um, that he wants to to bring influence in order to, you know, affect an individual or affect a culture. He's he's out and about. I think that's good. I think it's also good though to remember because I know, for me, I know when I've dealt with spiritual warfare stuff like back in college, and you know, I've dealt with a lot of that kind of stuff in the past. And so I think one thing to for people who might be watching or listening to remember that. If you are found in Christ, if he is the Lord of your life, that the enemy cannot possess you. Right. And he can only come and oppress you. He can only come and he can only come in when we leave a door open for Mm -hmm. him. Yeah. Through sin or, um, you know, a a decision we make or maybe it's things we listen to, things we're Mm -hmm. watching. Yeah. And I think it's good to remember to kind of start there and remember that because we have all authority that is given yep. to us in Christ. Yep. But we have to be aware of our cultural moment and the spiritual climate we are in. So yeah. what does that look like for us yeah. in the West? Yeah, so I think the, um, the enemy is just as alive and active here as he is anywhere else in the world. Um, and I think the way he comes into our lives are through the avenues that we give him. And I, th- I think um, a lot of it, you know, if you think about if the enemy is the father of lies, as Jesus said, then he often wants to begin influence in our life through deception, through yeah. twisting truth, through lying to us. And so um, there are there are a lot of ways the enemy gets access to our lives. There is weird stuff. There's, you know, we, we could have a conversation around, you know, ancient artifacts and oh, grandma's yeah. antiques and, oh, yeah. you know, um, yoga and all, like we could ha- we could talk There's about so all many that. other things that's but, true but i think kind of the everyday garden variety way that the enemy is is just constantly getting access into our hearts and our minds happens to do with our media like what we're like what, what we we're, take in what we're taking in mm-hmm. and um trying to use those avenues to twist our thinking mm-hmm. to distort um mm-hmm. our understanding of the three things i always think about are the enemy wants to distort um our view of ourselves, so mm-hmm. issues of identity. Mm-hmm. He wants to distort our view of God. Mm-hmm. So if he can twist our understanding of God, then he can disrupt that relationship. Yep. Or um, he wants to distort our relationship with others. And so, mm-hmm. for instance, you know, somebody, you know, something happens, so-and-so didn't text me back, and you start believing yep. the worst. You start judging their motives. They hate me. They've always been so mean. They've always been so selfish. You start to divide from that person. The relationship crumbles like enemy love stuff like that. Yeah. So I think going back to, I think media, I think the media that we, um, bring into our lives is something we could talk about here. I, I, so you know how I feel about social media stuff. Yes. I have a love hate relationship with it, Mm -hmm. but for our children, I do not like it. Right. (laughs) And for the longest time, how many I mean, probably on the daily, Laylee was asking us for TikTok. Absolutely. None of our kids still have TikTok. Right. We will not be doing TikTok in our household. Um, but what I, if I want to do it? Uh, we'd have to have we'll a have conversation. To, okay. <laughs> we'd have to have a conversation okay. about it. Okay. You are your own person. You can do whatever okay. you want. Right. Um, but I remember reading that there was this trend, and there is, I think, still currently this trend on TikTok that actually they're calling it witch talk. Mm -hmm. Like it's becoming so cool and popular for modern day witches, usually young girls who, I mean, they're, they just look and seem as cool and cute as like a Taylor Swift, to be honest. I've seen in the news articles, they'll show like pictures or videos of these girls. And I'm like, it looks attractive. 
But what mm. they're doing is they're presenting this alternative answer to mm. maybe your anxiety or a chant you can say before you go to sleep because oh, you can't sleep. Um, certain things you can do to um, be more attractive to a guy. Like mm. all, ki- I mean, I, I remember reading, it was all these different things. Um, whether it was legit or not, it doesn't matter. These girls are opening up doors, yeah. you know, and what TikTok does is it feeds that. Mm-hmm. You know, if, if, if you just stop on it for like even a split second, they realize that's enough to, I'm going to feed more and more mm-hmm. and there, there's going to be an interest there and I'm going to, the algorithm just feeds that to our kids and it's becoming like pretty prevalent. Like this yeah. whole witch talk thing. Yeah. And it's very like culturally acceptable mm. for a lot of, and, and I think the hard part is, is it looks like normal. Right. It, it's not like witches. The it doesn't way we, look dark and scary. No. Yeah. Yeah. And so that is mm-hmm. what to me is even more like, of course the enemy would do this. Yeah. Of course he would twist this and make it look so inviting. Um, hmm. You know, and that's like the extreme. Yeah. Of social media, but there are other things I think we take in, you know, what is on your feed as you scroll that is just getting you're letting in your heart and your mind and that could, could potentially be damaging. Yeah. I mean, if, if you think like if God is the source of life and the enemy wants to bring destruction or death, I think a good thing to evaluate really with all media, but we can start with social media is like, how do I how do, how does my thought life and yeah. how are my feelings after I spend a little time oh, on good... Instagram or whatever? Like, yeah. do I feel more alive or more dead? <laughs> I mean, yeah. that's one way to, to think about it. Like, am I in a better place or am I in a worse place? Mm-hmm. And sometimes if you're in a worse place, you could ask yourself, well, what am I exposing myself to? Mm-hmm. Um, you could ask, well, how long did I spend on that? Um, what kind of content um, Who am whether I following? it's the people, what are they yeah. mm-hmm. talking about? Yeah. 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 And so, um, I just think, you know, it's the Peter thing of like, be alert and sober minded. First Peter five, eight, it's yeah. like that we would, you'd utilize, you know, social media with, and there'd be a sense of like, but I want to be smart about this. I want right. to be wise about this. I want to be alert and sober minded, knowing that if, if the enemy is the father of lies and we're, if, if I were the enemy, I would figure out how to leverage social media in people's Absolutely. lives, right? It's a great avenue into people's hearts and minds. I mean, it's in our pockets all the time. It's in front of us, especially for kids. Mm-hmm. That's the heart. The that's why I think I'm so like watching it with our kids before. You know, we only have one who is on social media, and she didn't get it till 16, and very carefully talking them through how to navigate what's in front of them and how much, how much time you spend, you know, Mm -hmm. now at least on most of our phones, we can look and see how much time we've spent on things. And I think that's important to pay attention to because it's not just what you're letting in, but how much of it Mm -hmm. too. Right. Like the more we let in, that is actually discipling us more than sitting with the Lord or maybe even other people who have same beliefs as us. So. So true. Yep. So social media, I think we got to be wise there. I think music, we oh, have to yeah, be wise sure. with music. There, I think Christians have different takes on this. Yeah. Again, there is kind of the, hey, you know, kind of the '90s, like burn your CDs if they if, <laughs> they're, if it's that, not. I, heard I wasn't either, but you know, if it's not worship music, bring your it CDs to youth in, group yeah, and burn them. <laughs> and I'm sure some of that was cool and and spirit inspired. Some of it was maybe um, not not healthy for some people. Right, so. That's probably true. There, there's the burn, you know, the crowd. And then there's the other that would just be like, whatever. Like It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah. And that's probably where I grew up. And I go back and, I mean, I loved Jesus in high school. I mean, I like passionately loved the yeah. Lord in high school. And yet I go back and listen to some of the stuff oh, man. I was listening to. Um, a lot of the <laughs> rap. jams when we would do yes. that with our kids. Oh, my and goodness. And start playing music. Yes. And we're like, no, wait. Actually, no, <laughs> that's not a good song. I didn't realize there was so much profanity or he said that and that means that. Yeah. But, no. we, I mean, you're just like, I was just listening to the beat. And, right. We know, just like Rapping music. along with it. Or it was popular, mm-hmm. right? You didn't want to be the person who didn't know the song or the band or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So there's and a middle road there that's mm-hmm. probably healthy. I think um, it's harder even now. I mean, I think about um, 
Laylee for a while, right, was like walking around the house with her AirPods in all the time, listening yeah. as soon as she, you know, got her phone and could listen to her music and had AirPods. And we had to tell her like, that's not just, first of all, just socially, let's not yeah. learn to do that. But people do that. I mean, we've gone to, it doesn't happen here in Omaha because you don't walk around town as much, but like other big cities we've gone to, everyone's walking around with their AirPods in. I mean, I see people even in the grocery store who shop with their AirPods in. Oh, yeah. I, don't, I could never do that. I did it the other day at <laughs> you Costco. You did? Yeah. I listened to a podcast while I was shopping. It was How great. It was does wonderful. Does your brain? I can't. I, I know, and I'm not even a multitasker, but it was, um, yeah, I was able to do it. Uh, that's I impressive. probably forgot a few things, you but the podcast did. was great. <laughs> yeah. I don't understand those people, but there are people who can live their lives mm -hmm. with their AirPods in yeah. and like have background music yep. all the time. All the time. Mm -hmm. And I think we even had to talk to Laylee, like, how much are you listening to, mm -hmm. you know, especially maybe one artist, because there's a message there that you're getting mm -hmm. from that person. They are starting to disciple you yeah. because of you listening to only their music. Yep. And you have to be careful mm -hmm. about that. And yep. we don't think about it because we just like the beat. We just like whatever, like their voice or you know, whatever it mm -hmm. is, but they're, those words yeah, stick They do. To they you. can shape your thinking. They can, it's kind of the, I think wisdom is like everything in moderation. Yeah. Except for Jesus. Like, I think <laughs> you can, I mean, really like that applies to so many things in life. Right. Um, that if you just recognize this is, I can enjoy this, um, for what it is, but in moderation. Do you think, you and I have talked about this, time of day matters too. Yeah. I You've talked so, about that. Yeah. I think it matters on a couple fronts. I mean, there's kind of the psychological, physiological part of like your brain mm -hmm. and where like where your brain is most pliable, I guess is one way to say it in the mornings and the evenings, mm -hmm. times when you're tired, you, you tend to absorb differently, interestingly enough. Yeah. Um, but I also think time of day as it's related to what mood you're in. Oh, and that's so like, I mean, we know music can change your mood. Yep. And so I think, um, you know, if I'm had an awful day and I'm down and I just feel like life is not fair and I listen to music that just echoes that narrative in my heart, in my mind, mm -hmm. um, then I will be more prone to be convinced that that is my reality. That's true. Whereas if I put on you know, after, I mean, I'll, I'll do this oftentimes, like times where I'm driving the kids to school and I'm just in a bad mood and whatever <laughs> things have not gone as smooth in the morning, in the morning as I wanted them to. Routine, yep. And it's like, man, I just, I put on worship music cause oh, I've I'll got to get a, some juice. Like yes. I've got to get a boost of like something different. Yeah. We need something to my, rewire yeah, us. Yeah. It's kind of getting day. the soundtrack of my mind yep. into a different space. Yeah. yeah. So it does matter time I of day so. or kind of knowing where our brain heart yep is yeah that's interesting and then the last thing would be tv and shows oh, like shows sure. movies this is a big one someone even asked us about this yeah. like what do we how do we what do we choices? watch how do we decide what we watch how do we decide what our kids watch yeah i think a lot of it is because of this we i mean obviously i think you look at, you should look at ratings there's a reason people put ratings out for shows and video games and all the things like mm -hmm. i think that's just smart yeah but then I think just being okay to say, start watching something and realize it's not sitting well with me. Like mm -hmm. this is, you know, yeah. I've done this before. Yep. Like we'll start watching a show, might be even a popular one. And it just doesn't, it doesn't sit well with us. Mm -hmm. And we both realize we can't keep watching this. Yep. This isn't good for our hearts yeah. or our minds or like for me right before going to bed, I can't watch like violent shows or whatever. And I've learned that about myself, and I have to be okay saying, I can't watch that. I know everyone else and their brother is watching it, but if for me, I can't watch that. Yeah. Yeah. I think you have to use personal discretion. I think, um, I mean, there's certain things that are just pure, like, this is yes, just not good for that's any evil human or that is not to, good to take heart. this in. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think there is a lot of other stuff that is personal discretion. I think one of the things, I mean, be prayerful about what you, I mean, that might sound weird, but be prayerful about what you watch and what you listen to. Be sensitive to your mental and emotional state while you're watching it. And similar to what yep. we said about social media, how do you feel after? Um, and then three, like 
um, talk to your friends about like what you're watching. Yeah. Um, especially people who just spend a lot of time in front of the television alone. Um, yeah, I think it's just really important just to say, Hey, I, you know, I'm watching this show. What yep. do y'all think? Or, Hey, I watched this show for eight hours, you know, this weekend. <laughs> yes. What do y'all think? Just, it's just the, the simplicity of community to have some people in your life who can kind of know what it is that you're exposing yourself to. Um, if you find you're watching something that you're probably afraid to talk to your friends about who are, yeah, maybe that's an indicator of like, is this, is this wise? Yeah. I think that's good. And I do think too, let me just say this. I, th- I think a lot of times when we talk about the way the enemy gets access to our lives, we think it's about association. So like if I watch this, it's like the enemy is going to jump out of the screen and into yeah. my life. Yeah. Um, and that's not that's what not we're talking. We're talking no. about him using the, the airwaves in a sense. Um, well, the, the images. Yes, the images. Stick with us, the words. The words, yep. Mm-hmm. And, being, and, and messing with our way of thinking. Um, our attitude, our mood, the narrative that yep. we carry inside of ourselves. Um, that's really what's happening there. I mean, because reality is most shows, <laughs> majority of what we're watching, majority of what's being put out there are not being produced or directed or filmed or whatever by people who are following Jesus. So mm-hmm. the narrative is not going to align yep. with you know, what we believe for the most part. So you you do have to be careful with how much yeah. you're taking in. I, I mean, especially when it comes to, right, like everyone talks about binging shows, and I just think that's so, you've got to be, that's so dangerous, yeah. actually. Yeah. No matter what show it is, mm-hmm. I think just the amount of intake, you just have to be really, really wise and yeah. careful with. I think one for, I mean, for us, I think even more so, like, for our kids, it's sexual content. Mm-hmm. I know we're very careful about what what is being displayed about, um, you know, is there a love story or a love interest? It, what is being shown about that? How are they talking yep. about it? Because sexual jokes, whatever. Mm-hmm. Even more so than language yeah. for us. That, to me, is a little bit more dangerous for our kids and their development. But then I also think, for us, we use it as a, open door of conversation. Mm -hmm. I actually think it's great. I actually learned that from the raising boys and girls, um, podcast and, um, counselors there. They said Mm. sometimes watching certain shows or movies with your kids actually helps open a door of conversation Mm -hmm. to start talking about relationships. And our friend Tammy, Tammy used to do this with her kids Mm -hmm. all the time. Um, who would she would sit and watch a movie with them and would pause it, remember? Yeah. And we started yeah. doing that. Like, what do with, y'all think of that? Yeah, yeah, like, okay, let's talk about this for a second because that is not probably how we would handle things. Right. What do we think about yeah. this? So it doesn't mean like never, but maybe be careful of what it is and know. I mean, like for me, I can't watch violent things mm-hmm. and right before bed, especially yep. because I know it'll mess with my thoughts and yeah. mind as I go to sleep. And I've just had to be careful about that. Yeah. And I think you have to learn what you can handle. Yeah. And you, you going back to the kid thing, you, you're teaching them, you're equipping them with wisdom. Right. Because they're not always going to be under your, your watch. Yep. And so ultimately you go from that phase of life with your kids where you're kind of guarding them from things that we know they're not ready to see or right. process yep. to then guiding. And, and that guiding approach is is equipping them with wisdom so that when they leave the house um, they you know they're choosing their own yeah. inputs that they're doing that with wisdom and hopefully they remember like hey we're processing we don't just pick a show because everyone's yeah. watching it we're processing through it I mean there have been many times where you and I know we I have a ton of friends watching a show and we'll say that's just not for us or mm-hmm. same thing our kids will say all my friends are watching right yeah <laughs> and we're like Sorry, right. yeah. but that isn't, we don't feel like that is appropriate for mm-hmm. you at this time. Yeah. Doesn't mean never, but at this time, it is not what we feel like is the best thing yeah. for you to take in. Yeah. And I do think it should be said for the person who's listening to this, who's then like, well, why do we do any of it? Like, That's why true. don't you just right. shut off social media? You know, don't have TV. Uh, only listen to, yeah, worship. Go music back and, and burn your have, CDs. Yeah. And I think that's <laughs> where we can get this a little wrong. Like, um, if you want to do that, I think that's okay. But I do think you're missing out on this whole sector of this world God created. Yes. Where 
like art is beautiful. I mean, God created music. Music, right. when you get into like music theory and stuff, it is right. It's spiritual. It's just like supernatural the way God designed music to work. Um, arts and entertainment. Yep. You know, a, a great movie can inspire you. It, yep. The creativity can open your heart and your mind to things you haven't considered yeah. before in a really good way. Yep. Um, social media can be used to connect with people really, and to learn. Really I mean, it, we have like university level information at our fingertips yes. now. And so there are a lot of good things and kind of like what we talked about with the Halloween thing earlier, like we could take the approach of like, I just avoid at all costs. Mm -hmm. Or we could say as a spirit filled follower of Jesus who carries the light of God inside of me, um, the wisdom of God, the wisdom of the Holy Spirit inside of me, I can engage these things to a degree that they produce good fruit. Yeah, that's good. And, and they're created by God and they, they produce some good fruit in my life. And then I know where the boundary is to where they no longer do. Yep. And I can't even remember, it was way back in the 1700s, um, so I don't know what all the, the things that he was engaging in and watching in, but it was John Wesley mm -hmm. who said, um, s uh, do something, and this is a terrible paraphrase, but it, the heart of it is this, do something only until it ceases produce, to, to produce fruit, oh, okay. and then go and do something else. Okay. And so it wasn't like, a, hey, don't, don't do this at all. It right. was like, but once you notice it's not producing good fruit, right. maybe that's your boundary. That's and good. so what we're saying about, how does it make you feel? How does it make change your mental state mm -hmm. um, with all of these things? Mm -hmm. um, you can always be willing to present it before the Lord. And yeah. if he says... Not anymore. Not for you. Not Sometimes for you. it's not for you. Yeah. Not anymore. Yeah. You know, take a break. Mm -hmm. we, that's where we've got to be willing. We didn't even talk about books. That's a whole nother thing yeah. too. Yeah. We'll have to There's get into so that. There's so much. <laughs> yeah. That's good. That's uh, good. Yeah. Well, hopefully, hopefully that's helpful for people. Maybe we can do books down the road and uh, you can, you read so many books. You could give I us do. some I good like insights. I read fun books. Yeah. So what are your fun books you're reading right now? Is that our question? It, it can be. Yeah. <laughs> is, is it because sure. you are not reading anything fun no right so now. that's why i'm asking you <laughs> oh man so many fun books um i the last one i just read it's actually a memoir i don't know if that can it's not fiction mm -hmm. but it's called surprised by oxford it's yeah. probably the best book i've read this year that's so good. far yeah i told you you have to read it so mm -hmm. you do have a fun book i know on but your list. now that we've seen the movie i feel like i've yeah, read the no book. you still gotta read the okay. book everyone knows Okay. Books are always better than the movie, so okay. you got to read the book. I did read a fun book in June. Oh, okay. Tell us about June. Right? <laughs> that was uh, The Lions of Lucerne. And oh. so it's like oh, this, this yeah, book yeah. about like a Secret Service agent. And I think there are 14. Um, in four, the series? Yeah. There's 14. That is a long so series. So I have 14 years worth of fun <laughs> reading in front of me every June one book about this you Secret Service. Need I can't remember to his name open anymore. up your know, library to some fun I don't I'll get there you'll get there okay awesome. that's all we have yep thanks so much for joining us hopefully this was helpful for you and we will be with you next time on when we walk